welcome back to another video so in the last one we created a simple website virtual machine and uh, we have already stopped that machine so now what if i want to create a new instance so we click the create instance button and uh, do the same stuff that we did yesterday you know choose the machine type choose the uh, you know firewall roles add the ssh key and uh, you know you know the drill this can be tedious and error prone if we have to keep doing this over and over again there's a better way to handle this and uh, it's through using instance templates. So here on the same page where we create a new instance, we can see an option called a new VM instance from template. So that's what we're going to talk about today, instance templates. Why do we need instance templates? Because it's a lot of inefficient to specify the VM specs every time we are trying to launch a new virtual machine. Our needs are usually fixed, like uh, we have a fixed uh, instance type and uh, the SSH key, the firewall rules, etc. for now. So it makes sense to have a template with all these details pre-populated. So I'm just going to go back to GCE, which is Google Compute Engine and uh, go to Instance Templates and click on Create Instance Template. And uh, I'm just going to name it E2Micro Test. And uh, I'm going to have the instance type as E2Micro. Actually, I'm going to change the name to E2Micro SSD. and uh, change the boot disk type to SSD and 10 GB Debian is fine. And under firewall, I'm just gonna allow HTTP and HTTPS. So now that I think about it, I can rename it to E2Micro SSD HTTP. The name is more indicative of what exactly this template does. And under security, I'm gonna paste my SSH key and create. All right, so our instance template is created. So one thing to note here is that we cannot actually edit an instance template. There's no option to edit one. We can actually delete one, but that's it. We cannot, we cannot edit an instance template that's already created. So keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and create a virtual machine from this instance template. So if we click on that instance template, there is an option called create VM. So I'm just gonna call it template demo and now region is not part of the instance template at all that is something completely external and uh, we need to specify that even if we use an instance template so i'm just gonna go ahead and use asia south one so now you can see that it's already populated e2 e2 micro and uh, you know ssd uh, http https it also have already populated my ssh key yeah it helps saving a lot of time when creating a lot of machines and our vm is up so that's how easy it is to actually use instance templates to create instances much quicker i'm just gonna go ahead and delete this because we don't really need it all right so another thing that we need to discuss in this video is about ip addresses in gcp in gcp there are two different types of ip addresses one is ephemeral and uh, the other one is static. So by default, when we create an instance, it has an ephemeral address. Ephemeral means like, you know, lasting for a very short time. And it means this IP addresses could change if we stop and start a VM uh, back again. That means, see, I have this VM stopped yesterday, right? So if I start it back, Most probably it's going to have an IP address that is different than it had yesterday. So if we click on this simple website, VM, and uh, scroll down to the IP address, we can see in the bracket it's written ephemeral. So this means this IP address is not guaranteed to stay the same. And uh, it could change if we stop and start the machine back. So why is there ephemeral addresses? It's because it's cheaper than static addresses. So as you know, the IPv4 address space is you know getting exhausted, and it's almost impossible to have a new IP address for every instance that is created. So we have to actually pay extra to have an IP address that is static. So what Google does is like they have a pool of IP addresses that are available and it just assigns an IP address from it by default to a new ma new machine. And uh, these are ephemeral because when you stop it, they may they may take that IP address back from you and put it back to the pool so that they can be used with other VMs. So if we need an IP address that does not change, then we need to create a static IP address. So the thing about static IP address is that once you create them, it will never change unless we delete it 
or you know we release the ip address we can attach this to any vm so when should we use static ip addresses like think of it like this if you have a website you're gonna be pointing your dns entry to that ip address of that server then we definitely need to have a static ip otherwise like you know if we had to stop and start the machine back for some reason and the ip address change then we need to update the dns entry again so it's always a good idea to have a static ip address if we are planning to use this vm for anything permanent So how do we create a static IP? We click on the uh, hamburger button and uh, scroll down to networking and uh, VPC network and click on external IP addresses. So now it shows the IP address that we are already being used. You know, this is used by our symbol website instance. Here you can see the type as ephemeral and uh, if you click on it, you can see an option to make it static. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. We need to give a name. I'm just gonna give a symbol website and reserve so what it's going to do is it's going to take that ip address and reserve it for us so that means back in google compute engine and uh, vm instances here we can see the external ip address has changed from ephemeral to symbol website which is this ip so now what happens if i actually delete this vm take note of this ip address and i'm just going to go ahead and delete this vm Right, so the instance is deleted and now if we go back to the VPC networks, external IP addresses, it's still there, the, the IP address that we created previously. That means even if the instance is gone, the IP address remains. So in GCP, we can actually pin these things to the sidebar so that we don't have to scroll all the way down. So I'm going to pin VPC network. Also, I'm going to pin Google Compute Engine because we're going to be using these two a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new instance and I'm going to use a template. Just going to change the name to Symbol Website 2. I'm just going to leave the region as it is. And under Networking, we can see the current network interface it has. And uh, the current network it has, it is the default network. So if we click on that, so if I click on this external IP, by default it says ephemeral and uh, now it still does not show the IP address that we created. Why is that? That is because the region here is Asia South one and uh, now we are trying to create some, you know, US central one. So the IP addresses are actually region specific. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch back to Asia South one. Now if I come to external IP address, we can see our the IP address that we created previously. Symbol website is present here. In addition to doing that for external IP addresses, we can do the same for internal IP addresses as well. We have an option to reserve internal static IP addresses. I'm not going to do that for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and create this. Alright, so the instance is created with the external IP address that we have specified. So now if we create another instance, we can simply detach this IP address from here and add it to the other one. Long story short, whenever you are creating a production instance that needs to have a, an IP address that is static and uh, you know, you need, you're planning to use it for a long time. Like for example, your website is, website's DNS is pointing to this IP address. Always create a static IP address so that even if you have to recreate the instance or even if you want to move the instance from one instance to another instance, then you can easily switch it back and forth using this same IP address without having to change any DNS entry. Alright, so that's it for this video. See you in the next one.